I don't know what's going on. We're sitting here on Highway 11, this two lane back road out here in the country. And uh, as you can tell, we're at a standstill. Um, a big rig, a tanker, right back, just right over the hill. Uh, there's a wrecker pulling him off the side of the road right here. You can't tell, but there's there's guardrails on both sides. Well, you can see right here is guardrail. And then over here, and then, you know, a little bit of grass. And um, the tanker had pulled off um, into the grass. And uh, I guess he was checking something on his truck. Oh, we're starting to go now. And um, one thing I can tell you that I know from experience from driving trucks, now I'm not... I'm not an expert on nothing, but I've had this experience. Don't ever pull off the road when the ground has been oversaturated for a period of time. We just got through a winter storm here. We had our share of snow on the ground and um, ice. Well, all that stuff's melted. So now the ground is like very, very oversaturated. So that tanker truck had pulled off. I guess he was checking something on his truck and he went to leave and he couldn't get out so he had to call a record and just come pull him a little bit so i can imagine that tow bill but uh yeah we're finally moving now so uh but thank god it's beautiful now it's it's actually like 57 degrees right now it's it's, it's uh it's lovely so here we are we're finally rolling down the road finally uh, I was told uh, a, a message came through uh, saying that my load might be delayed this evening uh, we're not quite sure uh, we will find out when we get there I still left at my normal time left the house because when I was told this before I did wait at the house and came into work later and uh, I got to the dairy and they said, oh, your load's been ready for over two hours. So when they tell you your load's going to be delayed, that's always a toss up, man. And you don't, you don't know what to believe. You just don't never know. So I'm just going to roll the dice and get on in there at my normal time, or roundabouts anyway, and just hope that it's ready. Now look at this view right here. Look at this beautiful mountains here. This is, this is gorgeous, gorgeous view right here. Gorgeous. And uh, as we go around this, uh, this curve here, uh, there will be a, you know, an open area here in the grass. And I see guys or people with hand gliders and they're like putting them together and everything. I'm like, I don't know nothing about that stuff, but I'm like, okay, they, I don't know if that's where they land over here or they're, it looks like they're putting them together. And I'm like, well, they must take off from up top somehow and fly down through here. And I've always been fascinated with that. I wouldn't do it, but over here in this clearing right here, see that clearing right there in the field? That's where you usually see them. And uh, I don't know, man, it's a, pretty cool i've seen them floating around up here a time or two it's been a while but i've seen it that's what i say man I, i'm out here at the uh the foothills of the mountains and it's uh it's really nice it's really really pretty in the spring and the summer of course right now all the leaves are pretty much gone from the trees but but uh thankfully today it's very comfortable and uh now tonight, it'll get cool tonight, man. It'll get downright cool tonight. Oh, yeah. But that's okay. You know, it's all it's all good, man. So hopefully uh, things go smooth tonight. And we can just keep on rolling and get back home. You know, one time, I guess it was about six or seven years ago, I was in this area and right around this area here i went off the road and i uh, hit the mailbox right there and i went to that ditch now let me explain to you what happened 
I had a little Chevy S10 truck. It's a nice little truck. And uh, my parents had got it for me as a, just as a, a really a, a surprise gift. And the uh, people my parents bought the truck from were they in the town they used to live in in North Carolina. The guy took great care of that truck. He kept it inside of a garage all the time. He put dual exhaust on it. It was just a little four cylinder, but it sounded good. I mean, it sounded really good with the dual pipes on it. It wasn't real loud or nothing like that. It just sounded good, you know? And I was like, man. And it was a, the truck was like a beige, a light beige. It's a beautiful little truck. I love that truck. Well, one, early one morning, I was coming up this highway and I had my phone in my hand. You can see where this is going. And I was coming up the straightaway and for whatever reason, I was, I was checking my email. I was expecting some kind of email. And and uh, when I lit up my phone, you know, it makes your eyes have, you know, your eyes have to adjust. And I was coming into that curve. I didn't. I was still looking at my phone while I came into that curve. And like, listen to this right here. When you come off the road, listen, listen. You hear that? Those are called wake up bumps, right? So and that, but that one area that I went off. They might have put them down now, but back then there wasn't any. Because when I went off the road, you didn't hear that. It was just smooth. Well, <laughs> it was so smooth, as a matter of fact, I was went to the grass, and I thought I was still going straight. And uh, when I looked up, uh, the road had already curved around, and I was still going straight. And I was, and they had a different uh, mailbox structure up back then. It was, it was big, and it was. Uh, I don't think it was surrounded by bricks and stuff like that. It was just a big old post and big, and it was just, now it's just a teeny tiny little thing now, but, and it'd been raining, it been drizzly rain. It was just a crappy morning. Man, when I looked up, I had just a second or two to react, and I, uh, it was a stick shift, so I hit the clutch and the brake, trying to stop, and it just went, so I was in the grass, and it just, it slid and I hit that big old mailbox and it just impacted the front of that little truck and it went whoosh, and it just, you know, an airbag come out, popped me in the face, hit me in the nose. There's like somebody said, boom. And uh, uh, it just happened so fast. And um, uh, I didn't, you know, and I hit that and I, and I spun around and I, when I finally spun around and I stopped, I was almost I was right in that ditch line at their driveway, and uh, nobody was around. This was like you know two in the morning or something. Nobody was passing me on the road or nothing. I was the only one out in this general vicinity. And I, after the impact, after it happened, you know, you, you hit. I didn't realize the damage was that severe to my truck at the time. I didn't. I just thought I just knocked it the mailbox down I didn't know my truck was totaled I didn't know it was I had no idea it was that severe like I said so I'm sitting in the seat and uh, I didn't have my seat belt on so when I hit I went forward and that airbag boom and at the time I didn't realize that my glasses flew off and landed into the uh, passenger floorboard I didn't even notice that at the time because I was in shock <laughs> and um um, so I was, I looked down, uh, I remember it was cold outside and, um, I had a camouflage, thick camouflage jacket. I had it on, but it was unzipped. I had my, uh, you know, just like this work shirt and a t-shirt and it was just, it was a white shirt and it was just covered in blood and I didn't realize I was bleeding that bad. And, um. I tried to turn the key to the truck and it just, it didn't do anything. It didn't do nothing. And I thought, bam, you know, so I got out and uh, the front of the truck was just, when I hit, it just, it just crushed the front of that truck. And um, it was just, it just, it was gone. The two front tires got flattened and, and, uh, uh, I was just like, oh, crap, you know, and, uh, 
so you know um, I was like I felt really bad I felt really ashamed because my parents just got me that truck uh, again it wasn't a brand new truck it was a used truck but the way it was taken care of from the previous owner it practically looked, looked like it came off the showroom floor it was amazing I've never seen especially an S10 I don't think they make S10s no more I don't think but it was uh, it was in phenomenal shape it was just amazing and um, uh, so I sat there and um, tried to gather my thoughts and then that's when I realized well, where's my glasses you know again it was dark it's like two in the morning so I came back and, and sat in the truck and I just was trying to ask well, what what the hell just happened you know and I saw my glasses I put them on and that's when I looked down and saw the blood all over me I was like my god man so I knew I had to call and right there in that area too you don't have a signal you don't have a smartphone signal sure enough I looked at my phone and it's no signal. So the only thing, or the only number you can call with is 911. I didn't have a choice. I was like, uh, I think uh, I'm going to have to call and you know get help out here because I, I I'm dead in the water. No pun intended. But I, you know, what can I do? Um. So seeing that tanker back there with that record it brought back that memory even though I wasn't quite in the same spot where my accident happened but it was really close and uh, so anyway <clears throat> I get on the phone my smartphone I dialed 911 and uh, they answered and I told the lady I screwed myself over and I'll tell you what I did I said uh Yes, ma'am. I need a I need a state trooper out here. I said I've been in an accident, and um, I said nobody's involved. It's just me. I said I ran off the road and and hit something. I think it was a mailbox or something, but it just totaled my truck. I said so. I my truck's dead. I can't do anything. And she said, Well, what, how'd you run off the road? And I said, and I told her the truth. I said I was looking at my phone and I didn't pay attention and I went off the road. She said, okay, well, uh, whereabouts on 11 are you? Well, I'm still on 11 now, so 11 stretches a long way, you know, and I tried to give her the best general area that I was at. Told her what town I was close to or whatever. I said, I'm the only one, I'm the only one sitting out here in the, um, <laughs> in this person's yard. I said, when he comes down here, you know, he'll see me. Because my, I didn't have no four ways flashing or nothing. I was in, and that uh, the, the property owner's yard, and and uh, I didn't want to attract no more attention, you know. And um, every once in a while, a car would pass, but they didn't. It was so dark, they didn't notice me over there. And uh, <clears throat> so, I guess it was about forty-five minutes went by, and a state trooper come down through there real slow. And I was still sitting in my truck. It was it was cold. It was it was cold. Uh, and then uh, he threw on it. He saw me. He threw on his blue lights, and he did a U-turn, and he came back up, and he he got off in the grass. And, now you can see my tracks uh, when I come off the road into the grass. They go like this, and then they they start to you see where I spun out and hit the brakes or whatever. And the state trooper he. He, uh, he walked up to me first. He said, the, the first thing he asked me, he said, do you need any medical attention? Do you need an ambulance? And I said, no, sir. He said, are you sure? And I said, yes, sir. He goes, okay. He goes, just stay right here for a second. And he walks back and he looks at the tracks. My tire tracks from the grass. And he comes back to me and he says, you haven't been drinking, have you? I said, no. Oh, I didn't tell you this. Before he got there, I zipped up my jacket to hide all the blood on my shirt. I mean, it was a lot of blood, man. I mean, it was, I had quit bleeding by this time. I did my best to clean myself up and 
using my sleeves and all this because I didn't have any napkins. I didn't have nothing. You know, it's good to carry napkins now. Which, you know, you just never know. But I don't think I had anything at the time. You don't never know you need some until when the time comes, something happens, and then you need it. And you don't have it. And it's like, oh god. So he said, "You ain't been drinking, have you?" I said, "No, sir." He said, what happened? This is where I screwed up. I told him that a deer ran out in front of me. And I put on the brakes and all that stuff. And he didn't say nothing. Well, my dumbass, I, I didn't think that the the uh, 911 operator, I, I already told him, well, the guy... I'm sure she done told him the story, and I just didn't think about that, because I was, I was, you know, I, I was kind of scared, man. I didn't want to get in no trouble, or, you know, I, didn't, I don't know. I've never been in nothing like that, you know. And uh, I don't know why. I just, you know, I just was kind of scared and nervous, and, you know, I was like, I don't want nothing to happen with my license, you know, because got, I got CDLs. That's what you have to have to drive a commercial vehicle, and I didn't want nothing to go against my license, and I was just, all this stuff was going through my head. So I saw a deer ran out in front of me. He didn't say, he didn't say squat. And uh, he goes, okay, sit in the, sit in the front seat with me. Now, mind you, I still got my jacket zipped up all the way. And I was like, I didn't want him to see that blood because he just, you know, I, I, he, he might have thought, you've been drinking, which I haven't, you know. Don't, don't never do that, man. No. And uh, so... He's sitting there writing his report out, and he gets on his his uh, CB or whatever, and he calls for a flatbed or a wrecker. Come get my truck. And that guy, he just, that guy showed up like that. And I was like, well, wow, this guy just lived down the street or something? You know, he just, and um, the whole time the state trooper, he's just quiet. He's not saying, he's not saying nothing. You know, he's not really asking any questions. He's not he's just not saying nothing so I'm just sitting in the passenger seat I, I feel like an idiot already and uh, the guy with the flatbed shows up and uh, he goes and hooks up to my truck and uh, the state trooper says you need to give him your key to that truck he's got a he needs the key and I said okay so I give it to him and he hooks it up and he hauls my truck off to wherever it was going to be uh, held. Uh, so I get back into the state trooper's car and he says uh, I'm going to write you a ticket. And I said a ticket? I said why man? I said nobody's involved but me. I, I didn't I didn't. I said yeah my insurance will cover this person's uh the mailbox and the whatever on the property. I said, it'll cover that. I got full coverage, man. I said, but I said, please don't write me a ticket, man. I said, ain't. But see, I think what it was, well, I know, not, I'm, I'm pretty sure he knew I lied to him. So, and I also heard this from a friend of mine, another truck driver friend of mine. He said, if the state trooper, if a state trooper has to be called out to a scene, somebody's going to get a ticket. That's it. That's how it works. Somebody's going to get a ticket. Um, and whether it's you or the other party or, or you know, if there's somebody else involved, one of those parties, or if not both, is going to get a ticket. Because that, that's just how it works here in South Carolina. I said, well, I, said, I didn't know that. So, But I think that my personal opinion, I didn't ask him. I didn't want to. I was already in the hole deep enough. But I think he knew. I told a lie, so he 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 nailed my ass, so to speak. The ticket was uh, he wrote me a ticket for I think it was almost three hundred dollars, man, and then like two points against my license. So to top that off, I had to figure out how to get home. I was about at that point on eleven. We're still on eleven, by the way. See how long this highway is, and um. Back there, way back there, with the action that happened. So I was probably about 15, 20 minutes from the house. So I called my son, and I was trying to tell him to come pick me up. 
the officer let me use his phone because the state trooper um, because my phone I didn't have a signal and he did he had Verizon I, I have T-Mobile and uh, so he let me use his phone and I called my son my son tried to come out there we waited a while and he couldn't find where I was at uh, you know and the state trooper said look I need to I gotta I got other things I gotta do I got other calls I have to attend to I said well can you just take me home? I said, he said, how far do you live from here? It's about 15, 20 minutes. He's like, okay. So he took me home, and I told him, I told the state trooper, I said, this is the most expensive taxi cab ride I've ever paid for in my life. <laughs> he didn't say, he didn't say nothing, man. He didn't laugh. He didn't, he didn't say shit. He didn't say nothing, you know, but he was all business. But, uh, so, um, this is when my stepdaughter was still living at home with us, and, uh, you know, she stayed up till like two in the morning or whatever. She, this is before she started uh, working full time and you know uh, all this and that. And uh, she heard me come in the back door of the kitchen, and by this time I done unzipped my jacket. When I got out of the state trooper's patrol car, I went ahead and unzipped my jacket, and and I had my keys, and I got into the house. Kayla come around the corner and she saw me and she just went and she went and woke up her mama uh, which is my wife and she come running in there and you know it was just you know and I tried to tell everybody just hold up you know it's not as bad as it looks even though I was still in shock uh, from the accident at, at this point in time I hadn't I wasn't feeling any pain until the next day now I got home and I, you know, I had my phone and I called one of my managers that he don't he, he don't work there anymore now he he retired or whatever. Uh, I said I'm not gonna be able to make it to work. I had a wreck and I'm going to go to the doctor later. My wife said, "Let me take you to the emergency room right then and there." And I said, "No." I went and got a shower and got cleaned up and. Uh, laid down, woke up about 10, 30, 11 o'clock, and that's when I started to feel rough. I started to feel pretty bad. So um, my back was hurting really bad, and you know, my legs, everything else. She took me to the doctor, and uh, they did x rays, and uh, everything was fine, but that was the beginning of my back issues because when I went to stop you know you brace like this you know and and, and uh, it would be um, not long after that accident that my lower disc in my back would eventually just break broke in two and uh, I had eventually I had to have back surgery and it was God almighty, man. I've never felt no pain like that in my life. It, it hurt. And my wife, God bless her, she's had six back surgeries. Six. And I've had this one. And that accident was, I feel, is what really uh, started that whole issue with my back. And um, so that's the story of Highway 11 <laughs> and uh, I learned a lesson the hard way I lost that truck uh, December of that year I went and got my blue truck that I have now Big Blue that's when I got Big Blue um, the insurance actually I got good money off that S10 because it was taken care of so well and they gave me like uh, I think it was like $3,500 which was I wasn't expecting that much, and that's about what my parents paid. They paid, I think they paid twenty-eight hundred or three thousand for the truck, and the insurance gave me like thirty-five or thirty-eight hundred. So I was able to take some of that money and put down on Big Blue, which that was in 2013, and I just paid Big Blue off December of 2019, and uh, I financed it for six years, and. Uh, but yeah, 
uh, so I had that wreck in 2013 and then uh, uh, in the winter excuse me and I got Big Blue the week of Christmas 2013 because I had to have a vehicle you know uh, my wife has to have her vehicle and I got to have mine because I got to go to work and she's got you know she has doctor appointments and uh, things she has to do and we you know we got to have two vehicles man it's just we had just one vehicle for a while and that, that just wasn't working it just wasn't working we she's got things she has to take care of and so do I and so so I went to a place um, it's called drive time I don't know if y'all ever heard of drive time in your area but it's kind of like CarMax but uh, which there is a CarMax right down the road and the drive time is over here it's actually right there at Guitar Center it's a uh, right there it's just right up from Guitar Center on that on uh, it's called Highway 276 they call it the Motor Mile because there's a lot of car lots there in Greenville and um, I went to drive time and Big Blue was sitting up front by itself you know how sometimes they'll put a vehicle up front and showcase it you know what I mean on its own little parking podium or whatever and I said I want that truck and I, I did I put the money down on it and financed it for six years and it's mine. It's my truck. It's paid for. Um, it, it is a place that people like me go to where their credit isn't that great. But, you know, I got, I accomplished what I set out to do. I got a truck and it's, it's paid for now. And I still have it and it's still doing good. You know, it's had its little share of issues, but still got it. So there you go, man. Hope you enjoy this story time. The story of the crash on highway 11 i guess i can call it that and um we'll talk to you next time thank you for your comments um thank you for for uh your support on the channel give this video a thumbs up please if you enjoy the story if you enjoy the channel you know you don't have to buy anything just give it a thumbs up and if you feel like it give it a comment i read the comments folks i read the comments I try my best to respond to them. If I don't, don't take it to heart. I do my best to respond. And um, we'll talk to you next time. Okay, be safe. God bless. Keep rocking. This is Joe for the Jones Project TV. Peace.